Welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor, and today is such a special topic. We are talking about secrets to conquering your health fears, and certainly this is top of mind, I know, for so many of us. Given what's going on in the world and has been for the past, well, let's say, six months now, I know it's been such a difficult time for so many of us. And certainly it's one thing to have fears around the pandemic, but if you also had fears around your own health and the fears around perhaps manifesting something other than what you're already dealing with with your own health, I know this is of utmost concern. So this is a great hour to be tuning in let your friends know share this video as well it will be archived on social media so you can always refer back to it but we'd love to hear from you as well I've got my my phone here so hopefully I can dialogue a little bit with you on and in live in this show we also have a special guest which I'm so excited about we have Tanya Kolar is here and she is the mindset mentor so we'll be speaking with her today and she'll be sharing some great tips on how to conquer our fears, of course, doing it naturally. And I'm really excited because she has some great new techniques that I do not know about. And I, she's only given me a little tidbit as to how these things work. And I, I'm so excited to be learning from her as well today. So it's gonna be a great show. And it's, you know, when we talk about fear, we know that certainly fear breeds more fear. So if we have sort of a fearful outlook as to what's happening, especially with our health, because there's a lot of unknowns. And I know that, you know, after working for years and years with my patients, it's always the fear of the unknown. Now, of course, we have the internet these days and we have Dr. Google and Dr. Google is not always the best place to go and try to get some of your, your health information because what's happened now, and especially in the last couple of years, is that there's a lot of censorship. And if you do do a Google search on some of your symptoms or maybe you're looking at ways to, to help yourself, it's become very censored and you're not always gonna find the right information as to how to do things naturally. And of course, that's why we do our best to share that great information that's always my my mandate is to to give that natural information and to do it from yes evidence-based medicine but also from my own experience over the years as a naturopathic doctor and healing my patients but also giving information about your health to empower yourself over your own body so that you can really have dramatic changes in your own health and where does it start it starts here so you know if you've watched me before the mind-body connection is really what I like to teach about and finding that connection it's really amazing how you can change your own physiology you can even change your own DNA and the way that your DNA is actually formed is based on something called epigenetics and we can change based on our environment based on our positive thoughts and that's everything that we're talking about in this show today so it's really part of the brain so when we think about the brain the amygdala is something that we've looked at in a previous episode but if and we're going to take a look at an amygdala here the amygdala part of the brain is part of the limbic system and this is the part of the brain that's the primal part so the more reptilian part of the brain and it's meant to protect us so this is a center of emotions but it's also a sense a uh, center of memory so if we've gone through something that has been frightful this has been now ingrained in our memory and it's part of the amygdala's functioning and this is meant to protect us so when we see that bear and that bear is running after us and coming after us it's it's meant to for us to be able to react to that now what happens is something called amygdala hijacking and the hijacking of the amygdala means that we can't turn it off and those fearful thoughts keep coming and coming and coming and we can't shut it down so one of my tips here is to shut off that hijacking of our amygdala is to bring focus to that fear so what you can do is you can actually activate the frontal part of the brain so maybe we can take a look at that really quickly when we're activating the prefrontal cortex so the front part of the brain what's happening now in this is the neocortex so it's the newer part of the evolution of the human brain and this is our thinking this is our planning this is our deciding so to turn off that reptilian brain and that fear cycle, what I want you to do is to really name that fear. So when you know that you're getting those fearful thoughts, give a name to that fear. Some people will call it Fred. Some people will call those fearful thoughts, I don't know, 
Gwendolyn, whatever you want to call that fear, name that fear, then you can actually start to engage your neocortex because you're thinking now about the fear, you're not thinking about the fear that it has caused that fear, you're actually thinking about and naming that fear so that you can now engage that front part and the thinking part of your, of that, of your brain to be able to name it. And you'll be amazed as to say, oh, Gwendolyn, oh yeah, it's because you're having those thoughts about, you know, maybe your diagnosis or the pandemic and the virus, you're thinking those thoughts and, and you, you're now conscious of the fact that those thoughts are coming and now you name, oh, Gwendolyn, you're back. You're, you're, you're trying to plague me with those fearful thoughts again. I'm not going to give in to you, Gwendolyn. You can go away. I'm five had enough with you. And then some of the other tips in the video, what we'll do is we'll help to engage your brain in a more positive way, whether that's exercise or some of the other tips that we'll be sharing with our special guests to be able to turn off that hijacking of the brain and to do it in a natural way. So I'm so excited that we have our special guest here. This is Tanya Kolar. Hello. Hi. It's so good to have you Hello. here. Hello. It is such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming. And I'm, I'm so excited about, you know, speaking with you today because I know that, yes, you are the author of a fantastic book. So if you've not yet read Tanya's book, Breaking the Stupid Mold, this is such a game changer in terms of being able to really take a look, I think, at, at how you manifest certain thought patterns mm. and to really be able to, to change this for the positive for yourself. So that, that's really powerful to be able to do that. But please tell us, I mean, we're talking and you, you heard my, my intro talking mm -hmm. about fear. And do you, in your estimation, do you think that people really get caught up in that? And is there something we can do to, to get out of that fear mindset? Uh, yes to both of those questions, <laughs> absolutely. And that's the problem is that, you know, we are in this uh, world climate right now, which can be a very scary thing um, because of the uncertainty of what, you know, could potentially happen. And it's the fear of the unknown yes. that really triggers a lot of stress, anxiety, fear, which of course can lead to, uh, you know, depression, uh, you know, dis-ease in the body. Right. And so we need to be able to get present. I think that's one of the biggest things that we can just get present to the situation and yes. take a look at what is actually happening versus the potential of what could happen. Um, a lot of the fear and anxiety uh, and depression even comes from the past. Depression is usually that you're thinking about the past. Right. Uh, the fear and anxiety comes from the future, the, the what if scenarios ah. that could happen. Yes. Um, and so we get locked into the what if and we sometimes imagine worst case scenarios. And so what that is doing is it's instigating more fear. So you're adding to the fear that you're experiencing and you're, you're compounding that, the layers and the layers and the layers. So you can never actually take a look at just that particular moment. And so it's never the event that is actually causing the fear, it's the coping with the event that makes all the difference, right? It's yes, how we yes. perceive it. And so oftentimes it's our perceptions based on false beliefs, on false realities that sets us over the edge and causes all this, uh, you know, drama in our lives and the fear, the anxiety, and we can't function clearly day to day. So right. day to day uh, living becomes very strained. You know, have you ever noticed how if you are, you know, having a, a, an argument with somebody, right? And this happens a lot with a lot of people in relationships, particularly, um, you know, a, a, an argument happens and you now are bringing up things from the past, uh -huh. six months ago, <laughs> a year ago. It's yeah. never just that moment, right? right? Because yeah. it's it, things that are not um, fully processed that you are now bringing up into this present moment. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly for people that, I think of people that certainly for the pandemic, it, I think it sparked something in terms of fear. People have fear anyways, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and different, I think, levels of fear based on health and based on maybe family history, which I don't believe in, which I've written about, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. oh, you know, we're, it's all doom and gloom. And certainly for people that are watching the news and all of those <gasps> negative inputs, which mm -hmm. we've talked about in a previous episode here at the Dr. Janine Show, about changing those inputs because all of that negativity always coming in and inundating ourselves, you know, that's something that I know it plagues so many people and if you already have your own health concerns and now putting the pandemic on top of that I mean it's it's crazy so what can we do please help us okay so there's actually quite a lot that we can do so you know you want to consider your mindset like a muscle 
right? So we, we know that we go to the gym, we work on our biceps, triceps, or abs, you know, whatever muscle, and yeah. we know the benefit of that. But your mindset also is like a muscle that can be strengthened and conditioned. So it's really important to take control of what's going on, your thought process, the language pattern that you're using, whether it be verbal or just, you know, thinking, uh, because your mindset is equated to everything. Your results that you're seeing, your reactions, you know, it's all based on your mindset. So yes. your beliefs, all of those thought patterns. And so we want to start really becoming aware. One thing, of course, that I think is so helpful is mindfulness. So there's mindfulness and meditation. They're two different things. So right? what's the difference? Yeah. Okay. So it, yeah. mindfulness is about actually becoming mindful to your surroundings, engaging the senses, right? So okay. what are you uh, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting even, right? And I mean, you could do a mindfulness practice with your eyes closed but you're still so what are you seeing like you know the images that you're yes, seeing yeah, right yeah. Um, where meditation is more you know trying to still the mind and that calmness and in fact people who have difficulty trying to meditate if they have because some yes. people say oh well I can't meditate my brain is too active you know it's too analytical well then I would suggest a mindfulness technique right so that you know focus on something focus on a, a word focus on you know the sounds that you're hearing focus on something so you're bringing awareness to the present moment yes. and so this is what we need to do when it comes to our fears because our fears are up here they're in this cloud of oh my god the potential what, what is if, going to happen yeah. Yeah. yeah and so if we just bring it back to the moment then is the moment as scary as you think mm -hmm. so I think what's really important now is we're in this situation you know um, certainly across the world that we haven't experienced before is to now take it not even just day by day but moment by moment right because we yeah. can now process that much easier versus oh my gosh I have to be concerned about what's gonna to happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day and in two years and in five years and in ten years and twenty years. so our, our mind goes into overload and that causes a lot of stress a lot of tension of course the anxiety and the fear and yes. you know and just to be clear I'm not saying that fear uh, and anxiety are not real right because even in the present moment there could be a, a situation of course that is going to bring up that fear uh, or anxiety or, or depression or any of those negative emotions associated with that but again it's how we cope with it that's going to determine how we can move forward in that moment step by step right. so try to just compartmentalize it uh -huh. so that it's not so huge right. and overwhelming because yes. of course that's going to cause fear of and course. stress of course and I know that you were going to share some techniques with us, so maybe we could go into that now. So please, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was so tempted to look these things up, and I told you before that I wasn't going to do that because yeah. you know me, my my nerdiness. I look everything up, and I have yeah, to learn. Yeah, you're a genius. You've got all you. You know everything, right? No, so I don't. I'm like, I can't believe she doesn't know too but a lot about this. So this yeah. is interesting because, um, so. Anxiety, fear, uh, trauma, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, these are obviously like real things that people are dealing with. And there's many techniques that you can utilize. Um, one of them is EMDR. So EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. Ah. And this has been proven to be so effective, uh, even with, with uh, you know, post-traumatic stress, stress yeah. disorder. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's about using bilateral stimulation, mm -hmm. whether that is visual, auditory, or tactile. So usually EMDR is done through a therapist, a professional therapist, but there yeah. are mm -hmm. things that you can do yourself as well to help to soothe that stressful situation yes. or when you're feeling, uh, you know, the anxiety is, you know, skyrocketing. So again, EMDR is about um, helping you to process emotions and memories that you haven't adequately processed in the past. Ah. So emotions <laughs> that we suppress, yes. that's never a good thing. We, no, yeah. Well, one thing we really need to be mindful of is to, um, you know, not be in denial about what we're feeling, right? right. Very important to acknowledge what you're feeling, but you mm -hmm. don't want to live there if you're in those negative moments, right? There's, there's, there's a difference there. Yeah. Um, and so when you can now start to unravel some of those locked and trapped emotions, it's really going to become a game changer. Mm. Because if you think about any sort of uh, trauma, the fear, the anxiety, even the micro traumas, right? That causes like just negative moods and behaviors, yeah. um, they get stored in the body. Um, um, so whether that's stored as a belief 
belief system or as mm -hmm. a physical uh, ailment. Yes. yes, and this is something that we've talked about in, in when we talked about yoga and I was mm -hmm. asking about, okay, so I asked our, our yoga expert, you know, if somebody experiences a lot of muscle pain and, you know, is that related to, and yeah, and the issues oh. are in the tissues. That's what we learned, yes. right? Yes, 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 yes. it's yes. so true. And yeah. so I think it's really key because, so when you're using EMDR, uh, a therapist would actually, let's say, use their, their fingers, right? So, okay. yeah, yeah, and then you're, you're going to be following the therapist's fingers, oh. right? And so you're going to be processing your, your emotion, the memory. Um, and so with the bilateral stimulation, it's actually working very similarly to um, REM sleep, ah, right? So yeah. in, in the REM sleep, your mind is accessing the subconscious. Right, and so this is helping you to access the subconscious, the memories that you've stored away somewhere in the body. Um, so, uh, and it helps to take the situation that was a traumatic experience, whatever mm -hmm. that was for you, of course mm -hmm. there's varying degrees of that, but it helps to now um, reprocess it and desensitize it. So it doesn't have the same impact. It now wow. becomes like from here to just a little thing like this. Really? So it's not gonna impact you negatively as, as negatively as it has. So one thing that you can do at home okay. um, to soothe any sort of anxiety, fear, stress, post-traumatic distress order, you know, um, you know, things uh, is is called the butterfly hug. Oh, okay. okay. Please show All right. us. So yeah. now the butterfly hug. So you're going to take your hand, you know, cross one over here okay. and the other one over here. So very important yep. that you're crossing. Okay? okay. And so a butterfly, this is the butterfly wings and here's yep. the body. So your two thumbs are the butterfly's body. Okay. So you're going to take your thumbs and and just interlock them uh -huh. okay like this and what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to think about how you're feeling right in um, this moment in this moment that's okay. causing you the anxiety that's causing oh, you the okay. fear right yes. causing you the upset uh, and again that could be a micro trauma right yeah. um, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna tap on one side and then alternate so tap and tap and tap so you're alternating from each side so what you're doing through the tapping process is you're actually connecting the left and, and the, the right, right brain, brain. yes oh, so you now yes. are able to release some of those uh, you know trapped emotions that have been unprocessed and now is starting to become a little bit less a little bit less a little bit less um, you know it's, it's a very soothing uh, yeah. experience when you do a bilateral anything again right. that could be um, you know auditory um, you know tactile through touch um, you know and and the visual so that's why therapists will use their their um, fingers to guide you okay. because it's the yeah. eye movement is the key thing there as well yes. um, in that sense and think of like, like even like a, a you know anything bilateral like a windshield wa washer do you ever notice how like relaxing that is sometimes it is right yes. it's the bilateral stimulation oh wow mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. fascinating so just so I understand, yeah. so when, if I were to do this with a therapist, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of that traumatic thought or I'm thinking of my fear as, I, as I'm following the fingers? So what you're doing is you're going to access the memory. The memory. Okay, so you're going okay. to bring up the memory and a therapist mm -hmm. will work with you and ask you questions. But really, yeah. um, you know, oftentimes the question is, so what are you feeling? Or okay. what are you noticing? So ah. these are questions that you can, you know, certainly ask yourself as well. So what am I noticing in this moment? Mm -hmm. um, and then so by, by having and adding the bilateral stimulation, it helps to bring that high level of emotion down and lower. Right. And the more often you do it, the less intense that memory is going to be for you. Um, and so it's been, you know, proven to be effective, um, as I said, with post-traumatic stress disorder, which of course is more on the severe side. Right. of the you know anxiety and trauma or, or what have you but you can use it as I said for even you know the micro traumas that happen in the day and mm -hmm. I think it's very different today um, and with the these you know micro traumas because we create so much stress um, in our day-to-day -day environment that is unnecessary <laughs> right it's our thoughts it's our yeah. beliefs it's always up here mm -hmm. right and it's yeah exactly and I think a lot of our viewers can relate to that and I think as women certainly we have a uh, men too don't get me wrong but mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that we we think about and we're processing <laughs> a lot of there's even you know we'll get to it in the show in just a moment um, about a health anxiety disorder so women mm -hmm. uh, even f have fears not only about their own health but of the health of the family mm -hmm. and and the children as well so to to be able to now 
with something tactile that we can actually put our finger on it and yeah. actually bring that in. Yeah. I mean, that's now is this similar to NLP? So um, NLP, uh, I mean, there's there's similarities. They are different things. So NLP is uh, what's known as neuro linguistic programming. I know that you're familiar yes. with that. So of course, neuro meaning of the brain of the mind, yeah. uh, linguistic the language. So it's about being able to now take control of the language that causes the physiology in the body you know your actions everything is based on first it all starts with a thought right yes. uh, certainly um, but it's the language patterns and that could be silent communication right it doesn't have to be verbal necessarily it's, it's, it's the things that we constantly say to ourselves that are part of that language so the linguistic part is the language and then the programming is reprogramming um, to really create what it is that you want versus mm. what you don't want right. um, now there's there's many different uh, modalities and techniques within and NLP itself, um, and it's really based on modeling. So uh -huh. NLP came into play through modeling successful people and what worked. Uh, notably, there were three uh, top psychotherapists that they studied, and they found, well, why are they having so much success with mm -hmm. their patients? And mm -hmm. they found that very much it was language, uh -huh. um, also like the, you know, what we're saying to ourselves, what we're thinking, um, and so they developed NLP based on that. So they studied um, Milton Erickson, one of the most famous uh, psychiatrists in the world, mm -hmm. and he actually has within an NLP there is the Milton method, wow. um, which uses you know a lot of again language processing, language patterning. Um, they also took a look at um, uh, Fritz Perls, who was the founder of Gestalt therapy. Wow! Yeah, and famous. Yeah, fa yeah, yeah. totally right. Like yeah. so su successful in helping people overcome you know challenges and phobias and fears. Um, and then also another uh, top one was Virginia uh, 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 Satir. Yeah, Virginia Satir. She developed the family systems therapy. Uh, so you, they've, they've taken and looked at everything that they've done, put NLP together, and it's a way, again, to reprocess what's going on. Um, and that could be through anchoring, what they call anchoring, mm -hmm. um, or through, let's say, a, a, another technique is called the swish pattern. So oh. swish pattern is really, again, uh, switching out something that is not working and bringing yes. in what you want, ah. but also, um, you know, making the sound, like the swish sound, you can really? use your hands, yeah. because yeah, again, it's simulating different things, you know, right. in, in, in the, the brain, in the brain, right, right. yeah, to lock and anchor that in. So let's say, for example, if you look at, you know, speakers or whatever, they might have a particular thing that they do, mm -hmm. Tony Robbins, you know, yeah. he's a big one, uh, you know, which he does, he does his, like, this tap, yeah. or, you know, the way he slaps his hands, yes. very specific. Yeah. So he's actually doing NLP. Ah. Uh, that's an NLP technique. It's called anchoring. Yes. And so what you what you do is you start to create all these like great feelings and emotions. And you want to trigger yourself. Mm -hmm. um, let's say like if I just you know think about things that I want and I get myself into a state, get that physiology going, think of something that I really want to have and I feel good. Yeah. And then you touch yourself, whatever yeah. that is for you. Yeah. You know it could just be like this. Yeah. So every time you do this, ah, any other time, it's a signal, it's a signal and it's just going to stimulate that because you've anchored that into that body part, into that thing. It could be like you could just touch your ear, whatever it is for you, right? But it's so interesting because it absolutely works. I've done it, uh, yeah. you know, and, and the EMDR as well. I've actually uh, I, experienced it. I've experienced yeah. it and yeah. I have had such incredible um, you know, release and improvement from stress. Right. I actually did suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and it's, it's a game changer. When wow. you can take control of your health, and I think that's another real key thing that I would love to share with people is that you have to take control of your health. Don't leave it up to other people yes. uh, to tell you what's going to work for you. Yes. We always have the answers within, but it's the fear, the anxiety, the stress that doesn't allow us to tap into that, right? right. So we have to know that we are the most important person. Right. Um, and, you know, you talked earlier about that, how people think that, oh, well, if my family suffered from this, then I'm automatically on that trend. Who says? Who says that? Right. right. Like, that's it's, not true. That's not true. Well, that's what we believe to well, be true. And <laughs> mainstream medicine sometimes will have us believe these things. And yep. that's that's part of our message. Right. Is mm -hmm. to empower ourselves over our body. So thank you. I mean, that's <laughs> phenomenal information. And I know that if people want to learn more from 
Tanya's book, you can certainly check that out and into, you know, a little bit into what's happened in, in, in your own life and how you were able to heal yourself. So that's very, very powerful and such a great read. And, and the book really helped me as well. So oh, I thank you. I thank, thank you so you. much. Oh and God, thank you for pleasure. being here. Oh, I'm so Such happy. Fantastic to be information. Here. I love your message and everything that you're oh, doing. You. And I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much. It was great to have you here. And I'm sure we'll have you back. Mm, so, yeah. So, fantastic information. I mean, I think a lot of us can relate to having those fears, but we simply don't know what to do with them and how we can now sort of change and hotwire our brain in a more positive way with some of those techniques, I think, is a great way that we can, you know, have more positive thoughts and sort of turn off that in yoga, we call it the monkey mind, um, but that hijacking of the amygdala, it's actually what's happening with our neurotransmitters in our brain that can have such a negative impact, but we can turn that around for the good as well with those tips. So uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, when you're all of those negative inputs that are happening, especially if you're watching the news. So one of my tips is get the information that you need, but then get out, turn off that news, put on something more positive, do something more positive for yourself, because all of that negativity coming towards you can definitely have a negative impact on your health and your manifestation of the disease. So if what we think about is what we create in our lives, and certainly that could be either on the positive or the negative. So we want to definitely manifest a, a healthier life, and certainly it's very difficult to do that if we're watching the news and all we see is the pandemic fears and the virus and all, all of the, the craziness that's happening, especially right now in this moment. So whatever you can do, get the information that you need and then you know turn it off and do something more positive. Another thing too is to watch your internet searches because if you are doing a lot of the Dr. Google and checking a lot of things on <laughs> the internet, that this can be very frightening and you can actually start some of the things that you're reading about just because of our mind's powerful ability to manifest w exactly what we're thinking about. So this is true for me when I was in, in medical school studying as a naturopathic doctor. It's called, you know, the medical school syndrome when uh, you start reading and learning about all the pathologies as to what can go wrong in the body and you start to actually manifest some of those <laughs> symptoms and then you think, oh my God, and then you go to your classmates and yeah, I was feeling that too. <laughs> but then you realize that it's just because you were actually paying attention to it that and that's how you're manifesting some of these things. So the next thing that I'd love to talk about is, you know, some other tips. So there's some things certainly in terms of empowering ourselves over our own body to be able to be stronger and what we call the daily essentials. So some of the daily essentials in terms of having a strong body to be able to, you know, top of mind, be able to fight off some of those, those fears and what's happening with the virus right now is to do the basics. So the basics would be certainly having a healthy diet. So we know that a healthy diet, we want to have as many raw, fresh fruits and vegetables as possible. And doing that, you know, on a daily basis is definitely an important thing to do. And if that's a, a big transition for you, do your best. I mean, you don't have to do it all at once. If you love your junk food and you eat a lot of fast food, all I'm saying is that step by step, do it in little chunks so that you can really, you know, start to have those positive impacts. And the great thing about eating a clean diet is that you start to have positive impacts on your brain and your neurotransmitters. There's something called the gut brain reaction and that, that ability to have a, a good and healthy microbiome. So when we talk about a healthy microbiome, having enough probiotics, is really important to make sure that we have, so whether you're taking a supplement or you're eating the probiotic foods in your diet, so whether that's the sauerkraut, um, it could be kimchi, so here we see sauerkraut, but also it could be kimchi, which is the more spicy version of those fermented vegetables, which is fantastic. If you love spice, that's a great way to do it. Drinking kombucha as well is something that I love. Um, you can make it yourself, but I certainly, you know, um, 
um, one to buy it at the health food store to be able to have that that positive um, impact on my microbiome which of course is where a lot of our immunity is so having that that healthy immunity is definitely what we want when we're talking about viruses and protecting ourselves against the, those viruses another thing is exercise so is whatever you can do to get out and get active when we're changing the way that we think about things sometimes we simply have to stop thinking about our fears and to reprogram our brain um, when you're focusing on keeping your balance on a bike you know, as we see in this example you can't necessarily be focusing and stressing about the fears of what's going on in your life so the the ability to be able to exercise is really important of course every day to do that and to also you know make sure that you are watching what's happening in terms of your exposure to EMF. So EMF exposure, I've been doing a lot of research on this lately and we will be having um, a whole show on it. And the the problem with whether it's the cell phones, whether it's it could be even your house phone, if it's a cordless phone, if you have an alarm clock that's plugged in close to your close to your bed, I always recommend keeping these things as much as you can turned off and keep them away from your bed because we know that a huge chunk of our time is spent sleeping and so whatever electromagnetic frequencies we have around our bed that's a long and period of exposure during the day so we want to definitely make sure that we are decreasing that exposure so try to keep everything Experts will say six feet away from you. I say 10 feet. If you can keep your stuff plugged in, you know, in another room in your house, charge your cell phone elsewhere, um, not in your bedroom. That's definitely an advantage to decrease those EMFs. But we're going to be doing a whole show on that. One of the things as well in terms of coming back to diet for a second is to eat things that you enjoy. And one of those things, and there's actually a study that shows that chocolate, and that's why we have dark chocolate here. So dark chocolate is definitely better for you but chocolate has a lot of beneficial effects and what one paper found was that dark chocolate consumption actually has a positive impact on anxiety depression and health related quality of life of patients with cancer so that you know to have a little bit of dark chocolate and enjoy it and that's the key it's your mental status and your state when you are having that chocolate or any food that you enjoy to really enjoy it so if you're going to indulge in something that you love even though it's not technically great for you i mean chocolate is and has a bunch of antioxidants which is fantastic but even if you're going to cheat and have something that's that's not so healthy for you just make sure that you enjoy it because those and I believe my personal opinion is that if you're enjoying it you you are secreting then all those great neurotransmitters to make you feel good then that has goes a lot you know longer and has more benefit than you know having all that because a lot of people will eat something that's not so good for them and then you feel guilty about it and that's not good for your neurotransmitters in your brain and of course your dopamine and, and your serotonin and your feel-good hormones so that's really important the other thing with the cell phones coming back to the EMFs is to put it on airplane mode so whenever you can put it on airplane mode if you don't need to receive a call you're not in you know you're not traveling you're not out make sure it's in airplane mode because I've actually tested the EMF so with an EMF tester you can actually test and it's frightening the things that I found in the house that had a lot of EMF so that'll be in our future episode I believe next week we'll be talking about EMF so make sure you tune in next week on Monday at noon for that and we're gonna take a short break now we will We'll see you and we'll come back in just a second. Sorry to interrupt the show, this is a little break and we would love to hear from you. So please leave your questions and comments below. Thanks for watching. I love the fact that you're here. Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and turn on your notifications. So click that bell and also like this video. Give me a big thumbs up. Be sure to follow me as well at Dr. Janine on social media.
Sorry to interrupt the show. This is a little break and we would love to hear from you. So please leave your questions and comments below. Thanks for watching. I love the fact that you're here. Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and turn on your notifications. So click that bell and also like this video. Give me a big thumbs up. Be sure to follow me as well at Dr. Janine on social media. So thanks for staying tuned and this is, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the doctor-patient interaction. So I know if you have been to your doctor and putting, you know, COVID aside and the pandemic aside, but if I'm talking about health fears in general now, and if you've been to your doctor, certainly it's probably not always the most pleasant interaction and situation. Certainly if you have had tests done and you're worried about a certain condition and doctors are trying to pinpoint and give a diagnosis. I have spoken to a lot of my patients who have just said that they've had, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a great interaction and they've had terrible situations in terms of the way that they feel. And that's the thing. When we talked with our, with our expert a little bit earlier, Tanya, she was saying about, you know, it's, it's the fear of the unknown. And when you, when there's doubts about, you know, what you're getting yourself into and with health for so many people this is a huge area of not knowing and and that's where the fears can evolve from so it's important to always and and something that I hate which we learned back when I was in at the naturopathic college was we were trained to learn hope for the best but plan for the worst in, in terms of diagnosis and prognosis for our patients. And I thought, no, I've actually done a post on social media that's completely the opposite that says, hope for the best and plan for the best. I be, because I truly believe that we have the ability mentally to be able to manifest exactly what we want. And even in end stage disease, I've seen miracles happen and I've seen things turn around. And you have to have that faith. You really have to believe that. And you're not just a number. You're not just a diagnosis. You're not just a statistic in terms of your own health and if you've been given a terrible prognosis you've been given you know that that sentence that says oh you have XYZ disease I don't believe that that's something that you have to really actually believe in the first place yes you have to be realistic and you have to you know do things to make yourself healthy again but in terms of a prognosis it's not something that you you really have to believe into and you can have your own mindset so one of my tips on how to deal with the doctor's diagnosis is to go into any interaction that you will have with a practitioner and have a mindset about no matter what is going to come in no matter what you know the news is good bad or you know or otherwise that you will have a plan for yourself and whatever that whatever that blow is going to be in terms of that diagnosis that you're going to set out a plan for yourself to get healthy and to do things and again sometimes it's just baby steps and educating yourself about how to do things in a natural way can really be very empowering over your own body and, and can really turn your body around and we you know I've been able to to educate people and just just paying attention to the more positive aspects of getting things right and and as a naturopathic doctor we always look at the root cause of disease was it stress was it a stressful situation that you know you can use some of the tips from today's show to be able to sort of unwind the, those stressors out of your consciousness and have a more positive impact was it it could have been you know something that there was a change in your environment maybe there was a toxin then that you were exposed to I mean sometimes it's very simple from my perspective anyways as being a naturopath to pin point and that's what I always would ask my patients is you know when do you remember that things sort of changed for you for your health it's not necessarily when you got the diagnosis it was maybe because of that stressor whether it was environmental or mental or spiritual whatever kind of stressor changed your natural rhythms and your biorhythms that's where you have to go back to and then there's often most times a really simple solution to get yourself back into that more healthful state so you know don't don't always believe what they tell you at the same time you have to be realistic but don't always believe what they tell you in terms of a diagnosis and just go into it with a happy and healthy attitude so now it's time in the show for the dr j9 truth 
in which we talk about, you know, what can we do for ourselves in a natural way? And when we're talking about health fears, my greatest tip is to think of the 12th century English proverb, which says, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And what that means to me is that if you have, a, and my grandmother was a great example of this, she had numerous health concerns. Um, she was married to my grandfather being a, a GP, a general practitioner, he's a doctor. And you know, he was great, he was healthy, had a healthy mindset, but my grandmother had didn't do a lot and my grandfather if I think of the the difference my grandfather would read a lot and he was a scholar and he would always be busy 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 and he would go hunting well into his 80s and he would you know he was always busy my grandmother was not so busy and sat at home a lot and was always sort of the the wheels were turning as to the fears and the fears and the fears and the fears and the fears around her health around the family around different things and you know, no surprise to anyone is that she was the one who had all the health concerns. So that idle mind, thinking of my grandmother, and I don't know how many of you can relate to this, but that idle mind definitely wasn't, you know, the most positive thing that that was working in her to her advantage. It was something that was was not, you know, the healthiest thing for her. So whatever you can do to get busy. So whether that's exercise, whether that is, you know, taking more time. I think the pandemic helped a lot of people to take more time to prepare healthy meals. I know a lot of people started a garden um, and just keeping yourself busy in a positive way. And that's why I love exercise because you can't be, you know, when I'm on a spin biker or, and I'm in the middle of a yoga class, I can't be thinking about, you know, my next project or what, what I have to make for dinner or what the kids, you know, <laughs> with all the fears and things that can go along with having children. I can't simply do that because I have to focus on keeping my balance and, and not falling over in, in a yoga class. So that's a great example. So I've always, for myself personally, have found that exercise is one of the best ways to keep that from the, having that idle mind. And, and for those of you who have a lot of spare time during the day, um, make sure that you're keeping your mind busy in a positive way so that you can stay healthy and then turn off some of that, you know, that emotional, that that hijacking of the amygdala in the brain that we talked about at the beginning of the show if you're just tuning in now to you know scroll back after the program's done and, and look at the brain and that connection with the brain we have to do our best to turn that off and have it in a more positive outlook and and outputs in the way that we address our health fears. So thanks for joining me today. It was a fantastic show. And to wrap things up, the things that we talked about in the hour were, you know, changing our inputs. So certainly turning off the news as much as we can when we've got a lot of that negativity coming our way. It's a great way to do that is, is to turn that off and to also change the way that our brain is actually functioning. So when we're talking about the amygdala being hijacked, and that was the more reptilian brain, and our emotions being connected to that, that we want to activate the thinking part, so the frontal part of the brain so that we can, and that's called the neocortex, so that we can now actually give a name to those fears. So it's one thing when they're sort of unconsciously happening all the time and inundating ourselves and making us more and more fearful, but it's important to, to give a name to that fear and say, hey, I see you, you're coming, those thought, negative thoughts are coming again, I see you, Gwendolyn or whatever I called it today, <laughs> you know, to be able to, to name it and then give, give it, you know, that, that name so that now you're activating a different part of your brain so you can switch off that sort of, that um, hamster wheel of all that negativity and the, those negative thoughts. So also meditation and being mindful. So when we talked with our expert today about being mindful and changing those thoughts, whether it is being more having the mindfulness and maybe focusing on that one positive thing or also using meditation as part of, you know, your daily routine. And meditation I find is so powerful whether it's you know part of, of you know your morning routine or at, at nighttime, I usually don't recommend doing the meditation in bed because you'll fall asleep without getting all the benefits of the meditation because you can get a lot of positive messages as well from a spiritual perspective when you do meditation. So that's a great tip to try and, and to utilize in your daily routine. Another thing that we learned about was 
EDMR, so the butterfly hug. And I'm gonna be practicing this because this is a great way now to be able to now activate both the left and the right brain and to turn off some of those negative inputs in terms of our fear and what we're feeling and what we've experienced in the past even, this can also be healed. Also NLP, so the anchoring technique was fantastic. So if you need to scroll back and check that out, that is a great tool as well. And of course, having a healthy diet. So make sure that you're staying on top of your healthy macros. So your, your carbs, your fats, and your proteins, make them as healthy as possible, but also incorporate a lot of raw fresh fruits and vegetables into your daily diet and keeping up on your daily essentials so some of those would be certainly if you've heard me talk about vitamins before I always talk about vitamin D so vitamin D it's been in the news just recently about the beneficial effects for having an antiviral effect so that's of course top of mind for so many so you know making sure that you're getting natural sun exposure as well which we have a whole episode on that and you know the sun exposure is important because not only for our vitamin D D, but all of our skin cells and all the cells in our body actually have light receptors so whether you're getting that natural vitamin D from the Sun or you're taking a supplement and taking the right amount of vitamin D is essential so another recommendation is to definitely get your vitamin D status checked in your blood work to know where you're at in terms of your levels so that you can knock it up a little bit if you need to and certainly going into our colder months here in Canada anyways but most of you you know around the world depending on the climate and where you live you may not get it be getting enough of that absorbable vitamin D from the sun a lot of people cover up now and use sunscreen for beneficial you know reasons as well but also we want to make sure that we have enough of that vitamin D it's really protective for our immunity but for our mood as well and the correlation between our moods and having enough vitamin D is important so that's one of the daily essentials we talked about again the probiotics was important that's for your healthy microbiome to be able to fight things off and in terms of overall health that's one of the foundations of good health is having that healthy microbiome so that's really important so supplementing definitely if you need help with you know finding the right probiotics check out our links below in the description of this video and we'll definitely help to guide you and incorporating this you know not so hard if you certainly don't have a lot of dairy products for uh, in your diet you can also do vegetarian sources of a, a yogurt type of uh, food dessert um, that is fantastic as well so we'll be having I plan to have that as a future recipe is to do the the vegetarian yogurt which is delicious made from coconut it is it's yummy 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 so we'll be sharing that um, so make sure that you're following me at Dr. Janine we share all our recipes on Instagram and Facebook so make sure that you're following me for that and also when we talked about today about exercise we know that that's super important to keep our our mind away from all of those negative thoughts but also have a plan so if you're going to have a medical appointment always have a plan to be able to you know go into that with an open mind and no matter again what's coming at you in terms of the negativity that you you're gonna have a plan yes you'll you'll hear it but you don't necessarily need to take it in to your body yes you have to have a plan Plan and you've got to you know take those positive steps towards empowering over your own health and educate yourself so you know use as as much as natural medicine is becoming more and more censored uh, in terms of being able to find the right information do your best to get the right natural information certainly if you've got questions and comments leave them below we would love to hear from you and I, I would love to hear you know what are your questions around you know how to deal with your own body and your own natural health and we also talked again about the dr. Jane nine truth about staying positive keeping yourself busy to help to turn off that monkey mind and that that idle mind again which can can wreak havoc on your health especially when those negative thoughts start to come in so thanks for joining me today it's been a great show i can't wait to hear from you and we'll see you next week